Monster Kirkhoff. The mission of the Russell H. Kirkhoff Center is to provide students with inclusive space to gather, create, and engage. That's what they tell you. At one time, yes. But that Kirkhoff is dead, and she's never coming back. I first started attending Grand Valley simply because I was drawn to the building. I can remember the first time I saw her during orientation. My tour group began their ascent from the east. I could just barely see her through the trees. A chill crawled up my spine as I approached. Big, but fragile, with curves that never seemed to want to end. My breathing intensified as I slowly opened the door, and the creak she made was enough to send goosebumps up and down my arms. Being inside her was unlike anything I have ever experienced before. I wanted to explore every hallway, every staircase. I began to pull away from the rest of my group. This is all I needed to see. This is all I wanted to see. I began to realize if, I've, if I never attended this school, I would crave her. At that moment, I realized I was in love. For the first time since Raven Simone, I was in love. Nothing would stop us. There was no longer a need for Russell or H, not while I was around. I never realized what a fusion of beauty and madness this would eventually become. Then I lost my basketball. Everything started out great. I got coffee in her, I watched a movie in her, and in our third date, she let me come in from the secret back door. I loved her, even if she didn't have a uvula. The day came where my basketball suddenly vanished within Kirkhoff on my way to practice. I checked everywhere a basketball could go, but it was nowhere to be seen. I was distraught, but at least I had my gal. But sometimes I would lay awake in bed and wonder, so many students come and go from Kirkhoff every day. Do they mean anything to her? I could only cry myself to sleep at the thought of it all. One night, I decided to surprise my Kirkhoff on my way home from work. Little did I know, I was in for a surprise of my own. She was holding an event, an event for students studying abroad. At least a hundred different people squirming around in there. As I stood watching the swarming crowds, I could hear it. A beautiful, bouncing sound I thoroughly recognized. My bee ball was in the hands of a grubby Frenchman, smiling at the ceiling. She gave it to him. Kirkhoff and I had our first fight then and there. She did not understand. While she was convinced I was angry towards her polyamory relationship with the student body, all that mattered to me was my ball. How could she understand the love for the game? Buildings can't play basketball. I told her we were finished. She would hardly notice I was gone. I begin to walk back to my apartment. Sweat drips from my brow. I feel as though something awful is about to happen. The ground shakes as the earth around Kirkhoff begins to fold out. Trees are pulled from their roots, and the sound of breaking glass is all around me. Piercing yellow eyes stared into me. This was no longer the building I had fallen in love with. This was a monster. I run. I run as fast as my legs will carry me. The screams of those inside the center carry for miles. Kirkhoff is after me. I know it. My only option is to hide inside the library and go from there. The doors slam open. Students of all shapes and sizes are pouring to the windows to see what all the commotion is about, only to flee in fear of the approaching building. I come out on the other end of the clock tower and take refuge there. I peek around the corner, what was once a whole library, now having a gaping hole in its side. She screams in anger and continues forward, destroying everything in her path. This wasn't manslaughter, not in the slightest. I continue running down the street, and she is hot on my trail. With only a stretch away from home, I move with all my might. Fumbling for my keys, I hit the door and step inside. Rummaging through the closet nearby, I find the one thing that could save me. The no trespassing sign filled me with hope as I step back out to face my demon. Several of the nearby apartments are in ruins when she spots me. 
advancing to me with a speed unlike anything I'd ever seen. I slam the sign into the ground and scream, Get off my lawn! Halted in my presence, she can go no further. The entire campus was destroyed by the end of the night. Everything except Fresh, which stood proudly in the glowing light of the sunrise. Kirchhoff was found the same as it had ever been, unlike it had ever moved at all. People resumed classes the next day, surprised to find a number of corpses and buildings destroyed. But hey, that's what tuition is for. Things continued like normal. With speculation and rumors going around, people moved on rather quickly. Only a handful of people know the truth, me included. I still live here on campus, but I only remain to keep the students of Grand Valley safe. Inside the belly of the beast, you can find me at Subway. As I keep my watchful eye on the meatball marinara and the monster herself, I continue to grow old. With each passing day, I take their orders with a smile on my face. But inside, I am frightened. How I know she will strike again one day. How do you do, fellow kids?